Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Anime Podcast channel. My name is Benji, and today we get back to my boy Sanji. Let's get it! Chapter 1034, simply titled Sanji vs. Queen. In this chapter, we get some amazing information as well as a new power up for the goat himself, Sanji. Praise the goat! The goat! But before I get started, go ahead and like, comment, and share this video. Uh, me and my friends Nick and JC, we make weekly podcast videos. And as well, go ahead and join our Discord. We have one of the most flourishing One Piece communities in our Discord. Go ahead and follow us there. But without further ado, let's begin with the chapter. And this chapter is pretty relatively short, but it does not diminish from all of the hype this chapter. So we begin the chapter with one of the most dopest cover pages that I've seen in recent memory, to be honest. And it's kind of of Usopp in a Wano kind of kimono, seemingly. And basically the description of it says that he's uh, entered a shooting, uh, shooting range contest at a festival and he's basically winning kids prizes. And the prize I believe is like one year's uh, worth of juice or some shit like that. But um, it's just so dope how he just laid out nonchalantly with his little toy rifle in his hand, you know, shooting bullseyes for the kids. Make, you know, he give them back to the kids. And really quick, kind of cool thing, like if you see the mask that Usopp has um, on this cover page, it's actually very reminiscent of the sword maker in Demon Slayer, uh, Hataro. Uh, Hataro in Demon Slayer, basically he's the very overzealous sword maker who gets mad whenever you break your sword in Demon Slayer. But uh, I think that's a little nod or a little bit of tribute to Demon Slayer. I think personally that Oda tried to do. But uh, I don't know. I, I find this cover page to be one of the dopest we've seen in a long time. But moving on to the actual chapter, we actually get right back into the Sanji versus Queen fight. And we're located right by the Pleasure Hall. Rightfully so between these two characters. And we get introduced to Osami, and she's one of the geishas within the Pleasure Hall. And actually, she was the same female that seemingly was hit by Sanji back in chapter 1031. And kind of forced Sanji to really find his resolve that chapter. But we actually get a little bit more information of the events that happened back in 1031 this chapter, respectfully, of course. Anyways, Osami is running around the Pleasure Halls in an attempt to find her pet mouse. Because all of this dismay, all of this, you know, destruction, all of this crazy battle is going on within the Pleasure Hall between Sanji and Queen. Now, very quickly, I want to know if Oda purposely had Osami have a pet mouse in relationship to Sanji, um, Kid Sanji, having a pet mouse when he was growing up in the Vinsmoke household. Um, I find it very, you know, Oda loves to do this. So uh, I, I really want to see if that kind of connects a little bit later on. If not, then maybe I'm reaching, but I do want to kind of see more with that. But it wouldn't be uncommon to, for Oda to kind of connect these two things together. So I'm not really, like I said, if we get it, we get it. If not, then oh well, I'm reaching. But like I said, Osami, as well as the other geishas within the pleasure hall, are doing everything they can to get out of the way of the fighting because it's getting a little bit too much. So uh, right now, Sanji and Queen are right by the pleasure hall, you know, fighting each other that all the geishas are trying to evacuate the premises so moving on we briefly cut the momonosuke and it's really nice this chapter to see momonosuke fully committed to saving the flower capital from onigashima basically dropping on it uh, and basically he's starting to kind of get the hang of what are these flame clouds or you know how they manipulated how they are used and basically momonosuke he realizes this and i quote i am as much as a dragon as kaido that means I could grab his flame clouds. If I can not force the island back, I can at least stop it from getting closer." End quote. Um, and seeing Momonosuke really step up to the plate and be as determined as possible in order to save the people of the flower capital, um, I don't know, it's very telling of, you know, our from, you know, uh, Punk Hazard all the way now, seeing his evolve, uh, like involvement or his evolution as a character. Um, and like I said, he is 28 now, but uh, <laughs> it'll be nice to kind of see his adult form as well. And then, like I said, I do, obviously, we all want to go back to the rooftop with Luffy and Kaido, get back to that fight. But, but for now, we're going to get back to the GOAT himself, Sanji, and then obviously Zoro, you know, I mess with Zoro too. 
Um, but uh, yeah, uh, just like Hirogoda said, these are the stars that are taking the stage. So um, I believe that was either him or that was either uh, Marco. But um, but yeah, uh, basically, these are the players that are playing right now. And then we'll get into the Luffy stuff. But to the juicy part of the chapter, Sanji versus Queen. So we started off with Queen shooting laser beams at Sanji, which is, you know, different. But what is even more crazy is the attack that Queen follows up with, which he refers to as Henry, which is an attack that shocks Sanji with lightning. Yet we soon realize that you see the technique that Queen is using is the very same technique that Ichiji, Sanji's brother, actually used all the way back in Whole Cake, sparking Valkyrie technique. And sparking Valkyrie is basically like Ichiji, you know, you know, using laser beams, so there's that. <laughs> and that lightning technique is the same as Niji's, Henry Blazer. You see, we find out that Queen is able to utilize all of the same abilities as Sanji's brothers. And this effectively symbolizes Sanji fighting all of his brothers. An amalgamation of all of his brothers' abilities put it to Queen. So, you know, the very people that he's distanced himself from, you know, as from a childhood to now, you know, Queen is that right now. So uh, anything that have to do with Jerma, you know, Sanji is going out of his way in order to defeat and, you know, I think this would be a nice little thing because seeing Sanji overcome the very thing that he's despised all of these years is going to be a nice little nod that Oda is trying to put into the story. And we find out that Queen has been holding off all of these abilities, uh, you know, in relation to Sanji hopefully using his raid suit. And basically, it was basically an attempt for Queen to see if Judge's science was superior to his. And Sanji's obviously like, I don't want anything to do with this feud. I don't even want anything to do with this family. So, you know, get me out of this. I, I don't even want to talk about my family. But we find out that Queen is the ultimate Germa fanboy. And he says this, I've dug up everything there is to know about Germa science. My arsenal can replicate anything your brothers can do. And then Sanji effectively says again with that family, he doesn't want anything to do with, you know, this family. Now, I want to know if Reiju's techniques can be replicated. Um, and to be honest, I, I kind of don't want to see that. Anyways, anyways, we see Queen use his arm in the same technique that Yonji uses with his rinse Dane Tan. I think I'm saying that right. Grabbing Sanji and slamming them into the walls of the pleasure hall. But my boy Sanji is resilient. He finds an opening and kicks the very robotic arm that Queen has. Queen is pissed and Sanji lets him know that mentioning his family is only going to get him hurt. You know, Sanji don't play. Sanji about that action, dog. You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> so Sanji then goes on the offensive and he uses an attack called Flancet Strike. And I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I don't really know these recipe names. So there's that. Hitting Queen directly in the chest. Sanji then states this. Hurts, huh? Did you think that I just let you dominate the fight? There's no way you didn't feel that kick that sent you flying earlier. You've been doing all out for a while, so it's no surprise we're getting weaker. Sanji then goes on to say this. The difference is I found my resolve and accepted my fate. I'm not the same man you fought on the live floor. Queen is pissed, but he seemingly has one more ability that we haven't seen yet. Queen immediately turns invisible, mimicking the same technique that Sanji had with his raid suit, Stealth the Black. So Sanji is shocked at first, but he immediately comes back with this. Sanji says, you sure do have a lot of tricks up your sleeve. Then Sanji completely vanishes. Now at first, I was under the impression that Sanji still had the invisible technique of the raid suit. Yet we actually come to confirm that Sanji is moving so fast that he can't be seen by the human eye. But really quick side note, this just doubles down that Sanji is the fastest in the Straw Hats. And also, I really want to see the fight between Sanji and Kizaru. Obviously, Kizaru is one of the fastest members we've seen in One Piece yet. But to see Sanji go up against Kizaru, I don't know. That shit will be, you know, good TV, you feel me? Um, but, um, you know, that's just wishful thinking, so, you know. Don't take too much credence to it. But at this point, Queen also realizes that moving at such high speeds will drain Sanji's stamina. So at some point, Queen will be able to see Sanji. Anyways, cutting back to remember the mouse that was running within the pleasure hall and uh, Osomi, um, the geisha. You see, it all comes full circle now. You see, Queen is bitter towards Osomi. And basically, after the demise of Koromasaki or, you know, Hiyori, um, Osomi became his number one. Yet, after multiple times of rejecting his bitch ass, um, <laughs> Queen says this, 
I thought she was better ridden due to a terrible migraine. It's funny that she's apparently walking around carelessly now. I guess I haven't dished out enough divine punishment yet. Have some more. Basically indicating that my boy Sanji didn't turn into Chris Breezy. <laughs> I just get it. But uh, basically it confirmed that Sanji did not hit um, did not hit the geisha. Uh, while he was like under the illusion of you know getting these new abilities these new augmented abilities and um, I'm actually very, pretty happy about that. I kind of didn't want Sanji to hit a woman in essence I did kind of want him to be under the impression that he hit a woman uh, a little bit more on into the story But you know, I feel like you know him kind of realizing and still having the mental fortitude to figure out his resolve Especially towards the end of this chapter I feel like it's gonna like make a lot of dividends from here on out in the story and just make the straw hat stronger in general uh, going forward because from here on out it's straight up you know you got to be strong or uh, you know we ain't gonna go nowhere we ain't gonna be you know we like Luffy not gonna become the king of the pirates you know we're not gonna be the best crew so uh, there's that and basically we found out that Queen was using the stealth black technique in order to harm Osomi. And then my boy Sanji pulls up from the heavens and actually reiterates that he has a couple tools at his disposal. You see, in combination with his augmented abilities such as exoskeleton, super speed, and enhanced strength, he also uses these abilities in combination with his Diable Jambe technique. And Sanji comes up with a new technique called the Ifrit Jambi technique. A technique that shows Sanji having not only white flames but lightning on his feet. Now, at first, that name may sound a little bit odd, but it's actually in reference to this. You see, Sanji's new power-up was called Ifrit Jambe instead of Diable Jambe. Ifrit is a powerful type of demon in Arabic mythology. They're often associated with the underworld and also identified with the spirits of the dead. Now, um, this is kind of crazy because, I'm, like I said, I still kind of want a, a Lenarian connection to Sanji, but... You know, if we go the demon route and this is what he about to bring to the table, I let to see this too. So it don't really matter. But I do want to see, I do want to see more of this technique later on. And I'll kind of get into more of my thoughts and stuff at the end once I'm done. But um, uh, let me, let me hold on on that. But actually Sanji putting two and two together actually realizes that Queen was the one responsible for hitting the geisha. And this absolutely infuriates Sanji. And Sanji goes getting crazy Sanji hits Queen with a barrage of a different attacks and I'm not even going to attempt to say these attacks because you know th this shit is in French so I don't know that shit <laughs> and we end the chapter with Sanji calling Queen a scum and he bodies Queen he engulfs his legs in white flames and lightning and the attack is called beef burst I hope I said that right and basically sending Queen to the shadow realm now supposedly of course uh, we don't know that because there's a break next week and, uh, you know, no, no One Piece next week. But uh, I will say this chapter has been one of my favorites, more so pertaining to Sanji, obviously, because I'm a little biased. But um, I don't know, just loving to see not only the power up, but also this kind of nice little, this nice little nod to Sanji taking on the embodiment of the very people he kind of despises, his brothers, um, you know, which is, you know, queen in essence. Um, but, uh, I don't know, man, like this chapter, obviously 10 out of 10, uh, a couple of things that I kind of want to see here on out. I do kind of want to see more of this fight later on. I feel like, and a lot of people are kind of saying this, if Sanji's able to take on Queen at this point, and he hasn't really been taking too much damage, I'll say Zoro has been kind of getting marked by King in relation to Sanji taking on Queen. So kind of seeing Sanji kind of low diff, mid diff, um, mid diff Queen is actually pretty kind of crazy. But, um, you know, going here on out, like I said, I feel like this kind of still reiterates that Sanji not only is the fastest, but, you know, he, he does have a lot of amount of a good amount of battle, uh, battle tendencies. He has a good amount of battle strategies. Um, you know, he's very, you know, in essence, he knows how to combine certain things, you know, just to be able to combine his exoskeleton with his enhanced speed, with his enhanced strength and using that in, um, in conjunction with his Diablo Jambe. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, I feel like Sanji is a lot smarter than the people kind of, you know, write him out to be. Um, but with that being said, like I said, we got a break next week. Uh, I'm just excited, though, like I said. And then the funny thing is, Oda loves to do breaks off Sanji chapters, you know. He loves to let people sit two weeks on that on that Sanji hype. So, yeah, so what's up? <laughs> but, um, yeah, with that being said, like I said, this chapter was amazing. Uh, what do you guys think about the chapter? Let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and like, comment, and share this video. 
Um, and also go ahead and join our Discord. Literally, we talk One Piece every single day in the Discord. That's one of our most thriving communities in our Discord. That, Jujutsu, and obviously like our general chat. Also, like the chat. But, uh, <laughs> but with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and peace.